Okay, this is a, uh, a meteorite. And this meteorite is uh, an iron meteorite. And um, you see all this crystalline structure. When they cut it in half, this is what it looks like. Now, you see that black spot and that red spot? I'm saying that this was a, a, a part from a creature, and likely a lung, which is saturated in blood. Now, that is a red arterial vascularization, which means it has the oxygenated blood, which is FeO3. It has three oxygens. Now, once that stuff uses its all up its oxygen inside of the, the tissues, it comes back black. And that's a vein. And that's the FeO2. And it only has two oxygens. And so it's black and red. And it's fully understood. This is nothing that I'm making up. Totally understood. You break your a bone and you injure a vein, you're going to have black. And, and the bone has uh, ferritins in it, which are black too. So the black is fully understood. The red is fully understood. Nobody can dispute this. And the, the chemicals are here to prove that as well. And they just have to be looked at. It's not, why would this meteorite have a black hole and a red hole, a vein and an artery in it? It was alive at one time. I don't know what it was. A lung, a, a liver, a, 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 a leg. I don't know. I have no clue what it was. But I can tell you what happens is when it comes through the outer space and it enters into the earth and there are these iron ones, I think it's got to be uh, from a, uh, a, a, a lung because the lung is 100%. <laughs> blood virtually. Now, what happens is it came through the atmosphere, it smelts it, just like they put it in a, in a factory furnace, and it, it blows off all of the organic stuff. It, it, it what they call sublimates them, it volatile vaporizes them. And what you end up with is the heavier metals and so forth. And this is trapped inside that matrix. And these crystals are all the result of other minerals and metals that were inside of that blood matrix that have crystallized and they all have their own little crystal shapes hexagons octagons yada yada this and that triangle anyway they end up crystallizing on the crystalline form of their basic structure and that is why you see all this you know spectacular looking stuff you see that? That's not just a, a rock. That's a lung. That's a lung. And you see inside there? That's where all the red blood is in the lung. And that's why when they come through the atmosphere and they, they smelt, they end up turning into iron asteroids. That's blood. Now, when they, in here on Earth, they start to crystallize, too, when the holes... Hold on a second. I'll find one with a crystal in it. All right, here's one right here. You see that? That's what happens. Those are called vugs. And the metal seeds that are left over after this stuff would sublimate out of here, because eventually all that stuff gets, goes away, you end up with these holes. And these holes start to grow seeds uh, of crystals. All right, here's a bone. This is a, this is a bone. You look at it, you say, oh, it's just a rock. No, it isn't. It's a bone. And when I fracture it open, you can literally watch the blood flow. This is the arterial side bringing the good blood in. As it's used, it starts to turn blacker and blacker and blacker. And by the time it gets over to the vein side, it's as black as ace of spades. You see it? You see the bottom there? I'm not making this up. This is reality. And, and, and I, I mean, I'm looking at this, and I can actually see the blood coming in, being used up, and getting ready to come back. Still, so it's life. And it's, you go out and break out, open your own rocks. There are, everything, every rock that you're going to find was alive. Case closed. Here's another one. You can literally see the blood. Here's the blood coming in. The nice, clean, fresh blood. The guy wants to run around and do things. Here he goes into his muscles or wherever is in there to say, okay, let's use up that oxygen. Because oxygen is what does the work. Or, well, it's needed. And, and, and then it uses it all up. See, it's turned from FeO3 and it's sucking off those oxygens. And now you're down to FeO2. It's black as ace of spades. And then it heads back up to be uh, reprocessed. And the veins don't let it leak. That's just it. I mean, that's, that's what it is. All right, this is the Achilles tendon. And it's from Zabo, Zaro at, at Al, I mean, at Al 2009. I, I mean, I can't really find out who the author is, but I, I appreciate being able to use this. I hope I can. Now, this is 
the Achilles tendon, and this is in your foot. And you see these fibrous stalks coming out of this? That is what I'm saying is a similar, it may be the Achilles tendon, it may be a different tendon, but this is the architecture of certain tendons. They have a ball, and then they have these these tendinous fibrils coming out, and they're very, very mineralized. That whole thing is extremely spiky and mineralized and hard. And as it transitions out of here, it goes into the flesh. When it hits the flesh, they they transition, and, it, and it's literally a, 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 it's, it's like a step. It's un unbelievable. I'll show you how, what it looks like. And I, I, it, it steps off, and then the muscles start, and and that's where they break. Now this. Comet 67P could be uh, an Achilles tendon or some other tendon similar, but I have the evidence to show that that's exactly what it is. It's a tendon. All right, this is from min6.blogspot.com, and this is that 67P again. This right here is the spiky plagioclase tendon ball emplacement, and the bone would be like right up to here. And this is the stocky, fibrous fibrils that come out, and then the muscle starts right here, and the muscle fibers are broken off. And I have several places to show you uh, of that. All right, I showed you before the spiky ball was over here, and then it came out stalked up into the muscle fibers. Well, here's one of those muscle stalks that's broken off. It broke off right here. That, those little, look at those features closely. You see that? That's not just something that happens in, in, for no reason at all. You know, they didn't have that yellow thing that would be better, but you can see, boom, 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 boom. There's circles with a little tube in the center, and that little tube in the center feeds that muscle fibers. And I have those, and I, I can show you those over here. Now, I'm just going to show you something here. My, this has taken over my life. and. and <laughs> Everything I have here is devoted to doing this now, and I'm about done with it. So <laughs> I just want people to t pay attention to it. I, I I had so much stuff. See, these are those muscle fibers. Now I could come over here and show you that the identical same muscle fibers that are are in uh, in, in that structure up there, and the tendons, the straps that come over. Uh, everything here is 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 virtually the same. It has the red, and then it has all the stripy little muscle fibers, it has some more red down below. It has all the vascular entries, it has the weave, it has this here. If you look at that, that is it's impossible. This is no impossible for that to have happened in nature. I, I mean by sedimentation, absolutely impossible. If you look at that, that's the weaving together of muscle fibers. There's absolutely no question about it. And if you look at them on the ends, they have every little articulation exactly the same. There's no question. And the vascular entries, if you look here, you know, this might be hard to see. But you can see the transitions from those little see strappy fibers down. And the same thing happens here. That one broke down that end. I don't know if you can see it, but they're, they're weaved in there. See them? And they're... they're, they're they're highly mineralized. Now I have this on a microscope and it's very very easy to see that there's a complete step over from that strappy stuff down into this gluey stuff in the middle and then it goes right into the muscle fibers. And this one here, the tendons go on and the muscles are gone too, but the transition between the two is still here. So the ball is missing and the other end is just the fibers that have broken off as well. Now, a lot of this stuff has been DNA tested, um, and uh, I mean, there's it, no question what it is. This here, rocks don't have these kind of features. Rocks don't have veins and arteries, but every single rock on the face of the earth has veins and arteries, every single one. Unless it just came out of, a la out of the lava, if it's a discrete la rock, like you see here, there, every single rock that you pick up on the face of the earth, you can go out in your own backyard in 10 minutes, verify what I'm saying, because you're going to find a vein and an artery in every single rock that you pick up, unless it was fractured off of there and it's so tiny that it has no uh, blood supplies. But everything that we 
know was supplied with blood and it, there, there's blood supplies everywhere. And if you look closely, these aren't just rocks. There's no question these aren't just rocks. These are, 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 are products of life and I have videos on all of these things. That just it didn't happen by itself. So anyway, all of this stuff is verified. It's been CAT scanned. It's been DNA tested. You just saw what I showed you. The asteroids have veins and arteries. You can go out in your backyard and see in 10 minutes you can figure this out. And the black ones are the vein. And the vein is because it's, it's already used up the oxygen. And the veins get clamped off. And that's why they're filled. See this here? This is important to understand. The veins stay filled because they have clamps, and the reason is because the body is smart enough. See here, hold on. Let me put a little smudge on here. You see that black one there? See that? That's the vein. You see that one there? That's the artery. The artery is 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 pretty much purges, and that's because arteries have no clamps. When the when the body degasifies and blows out all of the all of the bodily fluids, the artery is the one that lets it go. The vein clamps off and keeps the, the stuff in there. So then when they end up breaking or, or, or hitting acids and so forth, the vein starts to leak. It, 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 what happens is that the, the blood supplies and the metals, they call it chelation, and they, they get circled into like a, like a cyst where they can't get out of there. And, and, and there's, they call them ligands. They, they attach around it and circle it. And, and, and it, that's it. It's stuck. It's, it's forever. Now, there is a difference, though, when it hits a certain types of acids and things. Then it, it disassociates those, those bonds and liberates the irons and so forth. And that's why we see, I have blood. This thing here, this thing here literally bled drops of blood. No blood from a rock? Incorrect. This thing here just spewed blood out of it. And I have pictures of it. And I'll show you those right now. No blood from a rock? I don't think so. This is came off, that came right out of that rock. Just the one I showed you. And that looks like blood to me. Now we've had all this stuff. I didn't have this analyzed because it's so obvious. But I had other stuff analyzed and it was 100% human DNA. Zero question about it. And I had three of them analyzed, and, uh, and that's what they were, is the human blood. I've had seven CAT scans. There's no question about what it is here. You just need people to take and, and, and pay attention to it. And uh, so that's what it is. Now, I have a whole bunch of other videos. I hope you understand that what I'm telling you is the truth. And if you start paying attention, and the scientists come out and they start paying attention to this, there's a lot to learn here. And a lot of things are going to change. It's not my intention to beat anybody up or say, well, you're all, you didn't know what you're doing. I just, this is all just reality. It's being ignored. Totally ignored. And I just, I, and, and this has taken over my life. I have so much of this stuff. I have literally thousands and thousands of specimens. I've done everything that you can think of with this. I've made my own fossils. And I, yeah, I'll show you that right now. My own fossils over here. You see this? These are, that right there is fossilized chicken tissue. And I have a video showing how I did it. And I did it with electrical currents, just right in the soils. And that only took about three months. And that is, that's fossilized. And uh, you know, I can't, I'm sure you can't see it that well, but I have it under the microscope. And I, I'll show, I have a video showing that. And I took in, I did a Larimar, uh, Larimar, I think they call it. It's a, uh, I saw this stuff and then realized how it could be done. And this, this is really how it ends up being here, but I have a better piece somewhere. This one here is a little better. And that only was a couple of weeks or, or a month or something. But you, the key is the electricity. And the, the current in the ground is full of electricity. You, you know, they don't pay any attention to this. It's what's called uh, spontaneous currents. But anyway, the, also, the other thing is you've got to look at what's inside these bones and how they're designed and what, what the, the, this is a lot to learn here and they're not paying attention to any of this. So anyway, that's my intention is to shine a light on it and, uh, and I mean every, everything has, has veins and arteries. You see that? This just look like a rock. No, it is not a rock. Guess what? It has a vein and it has an artery. You see that? That right there is a vein. Yeah. And this side is the artery. The artery blew out. That's why it's now clear. 
huh? This is what happens when stuff gets crushed in the ground and sublimates all the organics. They call it volatile organics, and they're volatile. They go away, and that's what we drive, we use the cars, you know, cars to drive around. That's fossil fuels, and what's left over is minerals and metals, and that's it. And this stuff is that the earth is completely covered with life and is made of life. And you've got to come down to reality. Open your mind up. You've got to take it out and throw it on the ground. You've got to get your mind so open to understand this. But that's the facts. So let's deal with facts and then we'll come up with the answers. That's all. You can't get answers from just putting your head around and not looking. All right. If you can handle reality, here's where you're going to find it. Mudfossils.com is my my YouTube site channel. Now, I have all the evidence here. It's, it's unimpeachable. No question what I'm saying is correct. And if you go and look at it, you will have to make your own decision. But if you know, if you look at it, I think you'll find that it's, it holds up. There's nothing here that can't be held up. And uh, all, I have all the information how tendons are formed and how blood is worked and how the plagioclases happen and how people have been maligned in the past for, for coming up with ideas like Velikowski, very, very smart guy, destroyed. Um, Manley Hall, destroyed, smart guy. Uh, all of this stuff, I have all of the documentation. I have over 150 videos. You don't have to, you know, and this one, I mean, I have all of them. Stonehenge, Stonehenge is a, is a, is a giant, giant. It's all pieces of giants. So anyway, that's, you know, you should go to my site and look at this stuff because it's, there's no way that you can not see the evidence and the truth. All you have to do is look.